Melissa Hunt. <clears throat> Adam Webb. Here. Mark Ham. Here. Glenn Lewis. Louis Williams. Here. Would you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <clears throat> Oops, they're supposed to be here at some point. Okay. So. All right. We'll do it later. Item two is a consent docket. Item A, approve the minutes of the regular city council meeting held October 18th, 2021. Item B, approve and ratify claims and expenditures for FY 2021-2022 in the amount of $3,371,385.15. Motion to approve. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Would you call for the vote, please? Danielle McKenzie? Yes. Jason Blair? Yes. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Adam Webb? Yes. Mark Cam? Yes. Louis Williams? Yes. Item passes. Item three, consider the budgeted purchase of a 2023 E1 custom fire engine in the amount of $591,558 from Chief Fire and Safety Company utilizing the Sourcewell Cooperative Purchasing Agreement Contract 022818-EOI. Good evening, Vice Mayor Council. Again, I just ask that you would consider the purchase, budgeted purchase of this 2023 E1 custom pumper from Chief Fire and Safety, utilizing the source well cooperative purchasing contract. Right now, these trucks are a year and a half build time, and it's all manufacturers across the board just because accessibility of parts. So this is something that we are trying to replace one of two trucks that desperately need to be replaced. And again, we're about a year and a half out to get a truck here in town. Right. So. Motion. Motion. Motion to approve. Second. Okay, any discussion? Call for the vote, please. Jason Blair. Yes. Melissa Hunt. Yes. Adam Webb. Yes. Mark Ham. Yes. Danielle McKenzie. Yes. Louis Williams. Yes, thank you. Uh, at this time, I'd like to welcome the group from Leadership More for attending tonight. Thank you for your participation. Mm -hmm. Item four, consider the preliminary plat of Silverleaf Courts located in the northwest quarter of Section 13, Township 10 North, Range 3 West, being south of Northeast 12th Street and west of Silverleaf Drive, application by Noble REF LLC, Planning Commission <coughs> recommended approval 8-0, Ward 1. Vice Mayor and Council, this site is located south of Northeast 12th Street and west of Silverleaf Drive. The property is currently zoned R1 as a PUD. Uh, the applicant is proposing to develop a single family residential development approximately um, uh, three quarters acre in size um, with five dwelling units resulting in an overall density of 6.5 dwelling units per acre. Uh, public water and sewer are available to serve this site. Uh, because the site is under one acre, uh, stormwater detention for this development is not required. Uh, however, there is off-site drainage that may affect this property coming from the Silver Leaf Shopping Center to the west. Uh, so drainage plans will be required to be submitted uh, with the final plat, um, and it will comply with the 2021 drainage criteria. Access uh, is provided by North Silver Leaf Drive. The site was rezoned to R1 as a planned unit development on August 2nd, 2021. In order to complement the surrounding neighborhood, the PUD included the following amenities. 70% uh, masonry on the <coughs> exterior facade, two car garages and personalized landscaping for each lot to include one to two trees for each lot and four to seven shrubs. Um, the Envision More 2040 plan calls for this location to be community commercial. Um, Land uses allowed in community commercial include a mix of commercial and residential uses. This application was uh, reviewed as to its compliance with the plan. Uh, due to the overall densities of 6.5 dwelling units per acre and the attributes of the proposed development, staff believes this site does conform with the requirements of the community commercial land use designation. And staff recommends approval of the preliminary plat. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Elizabeth, is this in a neighborhood currently? <laughs> uh, yes, um, off of 12th Street. Um, 
there's a Silver Leaf Shopping Center, right. and it's directly behind that shopping center. Because I, I see the rendering, the map, and it looks like there's lots around it. Is it so it's going to go in a vacant lot? Yes. Okay. It's been and vacant. just five lots? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And this, this lot's been vacant for a long time? Yes. <laughs> Make a motion, we approve. Second. Okay, any discussion? Call for the vote, please. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Adam Webb? Yes. Mark Ham? Yes. Danielle McKenzie? Yes. Jason Blair? Yes. Louis Williams? Yes. Item passes. Item five, consider the final plat of Grace Point One, a replat of the Grace Point edition located in the northeast quarter of Section 16, Township 10 North. Range 3 West being south of Northwest 12th Street and west of Santa Fe Avenue. Application by Grace Point 1, LLC, Ron Walters. Planning Commission recommended approval 8-0 in Ward 2. Uh, this site is located south of Northwest 12th Street and west of Santa Fe <coughs> Avenue. The property is currently developed as Grace Point Senior Community. The applicant is proposing to replat two sections of the addition as one lot and block. Uh, no additional leaving units are being proposed with this application. Uh, public water and sewer are available to serve the site. Uh, there is FEMA floodplain located on this property, uh, but all appropriate studies and documentation are in place from the original development. Uh, there are no modifications to the floodplain being proposed with this replat. The property has three access points to Northwest 12th Street. There are no new driveways being requested. Uh, there is additional right-of-way at Grace Point Drive, uh, was proposed to be dedicated to the public. Uh, however, the applicant has decided to maintain ownership and maintenance of this right-of-way. Mm -hmm. uh, stormwater detention is provided for this site in the existing detention ponds located on the property. Uh, there are various carport structures constructed over platted utility easements. Um, while the city staff does not take adverse action against these encroachments, appropriate documentation will be required to allow free access to the utility easements, uh, such as a whole harmless agreement or revocable permit. Um, and this uh, documentation will be required prior to filing the plat at Cleveland County. Uh, the Envision More 2040 plan calls for its location to be community commercial. Land uses allowed in community commercial can include a mix of uses up to 50% residential development. Uh, this application was uh, reviewed to its compliance with the plan. And as this application is not proposing any new living units, staff believes that this application is in conformance with the comprehensive plan. Uh, staff recommends approval of this application. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. I'll make a motion that we would approve the application. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. Call for the vote, please. Adam Webb? Yes. Mark Cam? Yes. Danielle McKenzie? Yes. Jason Blair? Yes. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Louis Williams? Yes. Item passes. Item six, consider comprehensive plan amendment number five, located in the southeast quarter of section 23, township 10 north, range 3 west, being north of southeast 19th street and east of Broadway Avenue from regional center to transitional commerce. Application by New Site Construction, LLC, Josen Gurmeet. Uh, Planning Commission recommended approval, 8-0. This is Ward 1. Uh, Vice Mayor and Council, items number six and seven on your agenda are companion items. Uh, this site is located north of Southwest 19th Street and east of Broadway Avenue. It is adjacent to the uh, BNSF railroad tracks. The property is currently vacant. The applicant is proposing to develop the property for a commercial mini storage facility with access from Broadway Avenue. Uh, that's through an approved access easement um, along the south end of the Central Park. Uh, the preliminary plat consists of one lot on eight acres. Public water is available along Southwest 19th Street and Broadway a uh, Avenue to the west of the site. Sewer is available along the west property line of the site. Uh, water must be extended from Broadway to provide adequate water service to the site. Uh, there is no FEMA designated floodplain located on this property. Although the property fronts Southwest 19th Street, access uh, at this location is considered dangerous. 
It was not advised by the city's consulting and traffic engineer uh, for access. Instead, the site will be accessed through an approved access easement uh, and drive located along the south end of Central Park, uh, the drive of which has been constructed, uh, is there currently. Uh, stormwater detention is required for the site. Uh, with the site being zoned I-2, a rezoning to um, develop the site as mini storage is not required. However, the site is shown in the comprehensive plan as regional center, which does not support mini storage as a use. Therefore, a change in land use is required from regional center to transitional commerce. Uh, developments within the regional center land use category are typically um, big box retailers and other large uh, commercial and service industries that uh, have a, a need a high level of visual and vehicular access. Um, the applicant is requesting a change to the Envision More 2040 land use plan to transitional commerce, uh, which is uh, transitional, uh, traditionally um, more of a heavier land use uh, than regional center. Uh, with the proposed use of the property being a mini storage and being uniquely located uh, with no access to 19th Street and being behind um, other buildings at front along Broadway Avenue. Um, staff believes that the transitional commerce land use and the proposed use of a mini storage does meet the intent of the comprehensive plan. Uh, staff recommends approval of the comprehensive plan amendment and the uh, final plot. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Okay. Any questions? Motion to approve. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Call for the vote, please. Mark Ham. Yes. Danielle McKenzie. Yes. Jason Blair. Yes. Melissa Hunt. Yes. Adam Webb. Yes. Louis Williams. Yes. Item passes. Item seven, consider the final plat of Broadway Commercial East, located in the southeast quarter of Section 23, Township 10 North, Range 3 West, being north of Southeast 19th Street and east of Broadway Avenue, application by New Site Construction, LLC, Josen Germeet. Planning Commission recommended approval 8-0, Ward 1. This is the companion item. Motion to approve. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Call for the vote, please. Danielle McKenzie. Yes. Jason Blair. Yes. Melissa Hunt. Yes. Adam Webb. Yes. Mark Ham. Yes. Louis Williams. Yes. Item passes. This time, uh, item eight. You want me to read it? Uh, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council, uh, the applicant has advised us that they're going to be out of town and not able to be here tonight, so they request that this item be tabled until our December 6th Council meeting. So I would appreciate a motion. Make a motion to table. to table. Item eight. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Would you call for the vote, please? Jason Blair? Yes. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Adam Webb? Yes. Mark Cam? Yes. Danielle McKenzie? Yes. Louis Williams? Yes. Item is tabled. Item 9, consider adopting resolution number 3-21, program programming the widening of Southwest 19th Street and Santa Fe Avenue intersection as a surface transportation program urbanized area, STP-UZA project. Uh, Vice Mayor and Council, this um, resolution will um, has to do with the widening of the intersection of 19th and Santa Fe. Uh, we are proposing an intersection with dual left turns um, and right turn only lanes uh, where it's feasible. Uh, this is to help with a traffic backup that happens um, every day on that intersection. Uh, the project would also include a streetscape and a 10-foot uh, wide um, trail or sidewalk with uh, regular sidewalks, six-foot wide sidewalks on the other legs. Um, this project uh, is estimated to cost $2.39 million. Um, the city would be required to have a 20% match. Uh, the rest would be paid with federal funds. The 20% match uh, would be uh, four. $478,000, excuse me, $478,000. Um, this would be programmed for federal fiscal year 2023. Um, if approved, we have ran the scoring on this. It does score quite high, so we have um, hopes that it would be approved. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? Okay, call for the vote, please. 
Melissa Hunt. <laughs> yes. Adam Webb. Yes. Mark Cam. Yes. Danielle McKenzie. Yes. Jason Blair. Yes. Louis Williams. Yes. Item passes. Item 10, consider adopting resolution number 4-21, programming the reconstruction and widening of Southwest 34th Street from Little River to South Broadway as a surface transportation program urbanized area STP-UZA project. Uh, this project is to widen Southwest 34th Street um, from two lanes to four lanes, um, including intersection widenings uh, and signal lights at the Eastern and Broadway um, intersections, a streetscape and 10-foot uh, trailer sidewalks along with regular sidewalks would also be included in this project. Um, the estimated cost is uh, $7,840,908.18. Uh, the, again, the city would be required to, to put a 20% match uh, with the remaining being funded through federal funds. The 20% match would be uh, $1,568,181.64. Uh, and, and again, we are um, uh, ap applying for the 2023 federal funds. Um, this application does not score as high, um, but we're still hopeful. Make a motion, we approve. <coughs> Second. Second. Okay, any discussion? Call for the vote, please. Adam Webb? Yes. Mark Camp? <clears throat> yes. Daniel McKenzie? Yes. Jason Blair? Yes. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Louis Williams? Yes, item passes. Item 11. Vice Mayor and Council, uh, our city attorney has advised us that uh, we really don't have the flexibility to make the proposed adjustment to the Board of Adjustment, so would uh, ask that the Council strike the item. Make a motion we strike the item. Second. Okay, call for the vote, please. Adam Webb? Yes. Mark Cam? Yes. Danielle McKenzie? Yes. Jason Blair? Yes. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Louis Williams? Yes. Item passes. Item is stricken. Item 12, consider approval of ordinance number 993-21, amending part 12, chapter 5, article K, section 12-616, by adding commercial collector streets as allowable expenditure of transportation impact fee funds. Vice Mayor and Council, the proposed change to this ordinance is to allow us to go transportation impact fee to address some of these uh, commercial collector streets like we just uh, did at the Shops of Moore. We've got uh, two or three others around the city that we may ultimately have to uh, address and, and this would come into play when we have multiple ownership and it's a situation where everyone's in charge and no one's in charge and so to get everything, to get anything done, the, the city just needs to step in. So uh, be happy to answer any questions, recommend approval. Motion to approve. Second. And just one quick question, Brooks. When these uh, you know, existing developments, there may not be a lot we can do, but if something new comes in, are there things that we can do to ensure maybe there's not as much confusion on some of these shared? Oh, yes. We're, uh, uh, our, our process is much better now. Okay. Okay. Any other discussion? Call for the vote, please. Mark Cam? Yes. Danielle McKenzie? Yes. Jason Blair? Yes. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Adam Webb? Yes. Louis Williams? Yes. Item passes. Item 13, consider approving change order number three with Crossland Construction Company for an increase in the amount of $15,000 the city's share to the contract for various building materials that increased after the bid and before the contract executed date for the public works maintenance facility. Vice Mayor and Council, uh, a bid opening was held on June 2nd for the public works facility and uh, uh, because of the uh, high cost of uh, construction at the time of the bid opening, uh, we did go through the value engineering uh, with the low uh, construction contractor and uh, as a result, um, and then once we awarded a contract in July and then the contract was signed in August, so during that period, um, the contractor did experience some price increases between the time the, the contract was signed and when the bid was actually uh, held. And uh, uh, the total cost of those increases were $32,183,000 and uh, we've, we recommend that we would go ahead and pay for $15,000 of those as a partnership with the construction contractor. 
Would we have had the same cost if we went with another contractor, do you think? Same types of increases. Mm -hmm. I think we would have seen the similar type cost increases, yes. Okay, so that's still, that keeps them as the lowest bidder? Oh, yes, yeah, they were the low bidder by quite a bit. Motion to approve. Second. Okay, any discussion? Call for the vote, please. Danielle McKenzie? Yes. Jason Blair? Yes. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Adam Webb? Yes. Mark Ham? Yes. Louie Williams? Yes, item passes. Item 14, consider approving change order number four with Crossland Construction Company for a decrease in the amount of $6,304 to the contract for revisions to the metal wall panel at both ends of the CNG building for the Public Works Maintenance Facility Project. As we indicated earlier uh, um, in past change order discussions and contract constructions, we're always looking at some ways that we can try to reduce the cost for the construction of the Public Works Facility. And one of those is, um, uh, because of the C it's a CNG facility, we would need to have had ventilation through the roof material of the uh, uh, cover material for our CNG trucks. And so what we decided to do was to go ahead and just basically have a, uh, open end, ends on each side of the, of the facility that houses all of the trucks, as well as uh, about a three foot, eight inch opening on the back side, which would provide the ventilation that's required for, for a CNG facility. And as a result of that, we're able to save uh, uh, the $6,304 in, in material uh, for the uh, structure. And we'd recommend that we approve it. Thank you, Vice Mayor Proof. Second. Okay, any discussion? Call for the vote, please. Jason Blair? Yes. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Adam Webb? Yes. Mark Ham? Yes. Danielle McKenzie? Yes. Mal uh, Louis Williams. Yes. <laughs> Item passes. Item 15, consider adoption of resolution number 5-21, allowing the Oklahoma Department of Transportation to modify the I-35 speed limit through more from 70 miles per hour to 65 miles per hour. Vice Mayor and Council, this was a request from ODOT to make the speed limit more uniform throughout the I-35 corridor through uh, South Oklahoma City, Moore and Norman, recommend approval. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> About the same thing, I'm like, this is not a popular topic. Didn't say I liked it. <laughs> Didn't say I'm voting for it. Make a motion to approve the change. Second. Okay, any discussion? Nope. Call for the vote, please. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Adam Webb? Yes. Mark Ham? Yes. Danielle McKenzie? Yes. Jason Blair? Yes. Louis Williams? Yes. <laughs> Item passes. Item 16, consider authorizing the budgeted purchase of six in-car video systems in the amount of $36,055 from Computer Tech International doing business as watchdog for new Ford Explorer SUV police interceptors from the United States General Services Administration GSA contract pursuant to part seven, section 7-205-6. Vice Mayor, Council, uh, this is a budgeted purchase of camera systems for our previously approved replacement to police vehicles for this fiscal year. Uh, the camera systems include two outward facing cameras and one camera that covers the inner compartment, which is all standard in our police vehicles here and more, uh, would recommend approval. Make a motion to approve. Second. Okay, any discussion? Call for the vote, please. Adam Webb? Yes. Mark Ham? Yes. Danielle McKenzie? Yes. Jason Blair? Yes. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Louis Williams? Yes. Item passes. Item 17, consider the budgeted purchase of interior and exterior parts for six new Ford Explorer SUV police interceptors in the amount of $36,668 from Fleet Safety Equipment Incorporated, doing business as Dana Safety Supply as the lowest of three written quotes. Vice Mayor and Council, this uh, also is a budgeted purchase of various accoutrements and safety equipment for previously approved replacement police vehicles for this fiscal year. Recommend approval. Make motion, a motion to approve. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Call for the vote, please. Was that you, Mark, that made the motion? It's Mark. Mark. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mark Ham. Yes. Danielle McKenzie? Yes. Jason Blair? Yes. 
Melissa Hunt? Yes. Adam Webb? Yes. Louis Williams? Yes. Item passes. Item 18. Discuss and consider, if deemed appropriate, authorize the city manager to vote for the allocation proposal for assessment three in regard to the Diaz refinery. Vice Mayor and Council, this is the uh, latest chapter in the what appears to be never ending saga of the Diaz refinery. Uh, I think it was several, maybe a couple of years ago, uh, the same type of uh, situation arose with the Council. Uh, Thirty some years ago, it was uh, determined that the city of Moore and other entities in the state of Oklahoma transferred their waste, oil, petroleum waste, uh, to the Diaz refinery. And uh, it became one of those uh, federal government Superfund sites and cleanup sites. Uh, City of Moore was assessed uh, an amount of money to begin with based upon estimates that were arrived at at the time uh, as to the amount of waste that the city had deposited and then depending upon how much each generator put into the system, they were assessed a certain amount of the cost of the cleanup. Uh, everybody paid into it, and at the time there was uh, an understanding of, uh, oh yeah, this is all you're going to have to pay. We've got plenty. We'll get it cleaned up with the amount that everybody's put into it. Well, they found out that that really didn't happen. Uh, and uh, so every once in a while, they come back to the uh, generators uh, to contribute a little extra money towards the cleanup. Uh, I think uh, in this, uh, our contribution on this would be $1,000, uh, which thousand dollars is thousand dollars but in the scheme of things uh, it's not a lot is there a to, date or is this the last transaction how do we close this out so it doesn't keep happening forever or will we be able to I have no idea okay. once we get once we get a uh, clean bill of health everybody gets a clean bill of health and it's all cleaned up that's what it ends but I cannot give you it, it you know the intent, of course, was that it'd be cleaned up and done by now, you know, but uh, it was supposed to be, I think, a 25, they figured maybe 25 year cleanup and process to clean all the dirt and everything that was there, dispose of it. Uh, but every once in a while, they hit up all the generators again for their contribution. And uh, so I said, way back when, when they did the agreement, uh, it was all kind of based on nobody really knowing how much each individual put in there, but they ranked them on uh, the uh, generators, and we were low, uh, which is why we're $1,000 and, and not more. Motion to approve. Second. Okay, any discussion? Well, just, uh, just to make the council aware that uh, the last time we came to the council with this, the, the bill was about $1,000 also. So as Randy said, we are one of the smaller generators. And so while we're not sure how many more $1,000 bills may come our way, they're not increasing the increment or anything like that. Okay. Any other discussion? Call for the vote, please. Danielle McKenzie, yes. Jason Blair? Yes. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Adam Webb? Yes. Mark Ham? Yes. Louis Williams? Yes. Item passes. Item 19, consider approval of a budget supplement to budget funds and related expenses for two new vehicles for the fire department from the half cent sales tax fund. Vice Mayor and Council, this amendment will allow the fire department to utilize available funds from fiscal year 21's half cent sales tax to replace two older vehicles with new ones. Be glad to answer any questions you might have. 
Is there in a future meeting will we approve the purchase of those vehicles? Yes, ma'am. I believe okay. probably at the next meeting. Okay. Make a motion we approve. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Call for the vote, please. Jason Blair? Yes. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Adam Webb? Yes. Mark Ham? Yes. Daniel McKenzie? Yes. Louis Williams? Yes. Item passes. At this time, we'll recess the City Council meeting and convene the Moore Public Works Authority meeting. Item 20 is a consent docket. Item A, receive and approve the minutes of the regular Moore Public Works Authority meeting held October 18th, 2021. Item B is approve and ratify claims and expenditures for FY 2021-2022 in the amount of $877,581.52. Motion to approve. Second. Okay, it's a consent docket. Would you call for the vote, please? Daniel McKenzie? Yes. Jason Blair? Yes. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Adam Webb? Yes. Mark Ham? Yes. Louis Williams? Yes. Item passes. At this time, we'll recess the Moore Public Works Authority meeting and convene the Moore Risk Management meeting. Item 21 is a consent docket. Item A is accept the minutes of the regular Moore Risk Management meeting held October 18th, 2021. Item B is approve and ratify claims and expenditures for FY 2021-2022 in the amount of $177,565.47. Motion to approve. Second. Okay, uh, call for the vote, please. Mark Ham. Yes. Adam Webb. Yes. Melissa Hunt. Yes. Jason Blair. Yes. Danielle McKenzie. Yes. Louis Williams. Yes, item passes. At this time, we'll recess the more risk management oh, meeting. No and reconvene the city council meeting. Let the record show that all members that were present before are still present. Item 22 is new business. Item A is citizens forum for items not on the agenda. I don't, nobody signed up. Would anybody care to speak? You guys didn't prepare your speeches? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kim's standing. Kim's standing, I think she wants to say something. You know, oh, I was just, I thought, I thought. We had, uh, uh, we had city staff uh, spend a lot of time in preparation to make presentations at the station earlier this afternoon, so I think it's only fair that leadership more get up and make, <laughs> oh, they're also proposals. <laughs> okay. Item B is items from the city council or city uh, trustees. I'd say the shops at Moore looks fantastic and finished yeah. how many weeks ahead of schedule? I thought we were well into November. Uh, two or three. Yeah, I was going to say. I, three. Yeah, I was three. very concerned nice. about how far it was going to be, and we finished. Um, Not me. I knew they had it under control. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was still worried. Um, and then I wanted to just thank you to Chief Gibson and the team. I noticed um, in a couple of neighborhoods last night, uh, police um, going through very slowly and very cautiously. Um, but, yeah, we had a lot of... Um, a lot of supervision and it was a great turnout for trick-or-treating not only at old town but then on sunday night as well cool. very good and i have a couple of just a couple of quick things on a reference to acog meetings when i uh, agreed to be the city's representative which i've done for a number of years and i'm glad to do it but since then my employer has changed i don't have quite the flexibility that i had with my schedule then so that's where I need help from all the council. No, Danielle, Melissa have uh, been able to attend. And so the next meeting, and I need help with these next two meetings, I guess is the point that I'm getting. So if you, Jason, Louie, Adam, if y'all could look at your calendars, November 18th and December 19th are the next ACOG meetings. They start at one o'clock. And if you uh, have availability, just probably let Brooks know and I'll- December 9th, you said? December, November 18th and December 19th. Because of the holidays, they're different. The 19th, is a, the 19th is a Sunday. Okay, I'll have to. I'll, okay. It'll be that Thursday. Okay. But I'll, I'll double I could probably check. do the December one. I can't do the November one. Okay. Well, anyways, just if you can do them, let me know so we can. We didn't have anybody there at last meeting, and it just kind of puts them in a jam. Uh, and I just, just need your help. So if you could look at that. Also, Jason sent me a text telling me that uh, he is immune to most speed limit laws anyway, so it doesn't affect. <laughs> 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 I was like, what? Thank you, Jerry. Okay, anyone else? <laughs> no. Item C, items from the city manager, trust manager. 
Yes, several things. On this Thursday will be our final town hall meeting at Oak Ridge Elementary for the election on November 9th. Would encourage anyone to attend that would like some more information about it. Uh, also, information is available on our website. So uh, that's another, another source. Our election is November the 9th. Would encourage residents to go out and vote. I believe that we have a very good track record of responsibly, financially responsibly addressing the infrastructure in the city of Moore and these projects, if passed, would do the same thing. Would like to congratulate Sergeant Mikhail Washington uh, for his generosity uh, towards a, a young man that uh, works at the, at the Crest. Uh, there was a TV spot done on him about 10 days ago. And so, and you know, not only congratulations to him, but to other police and firemen that also do similar things, they just didn't happen to make the news. And then our field work for our audit has been completed, so the report should probably be presented to council if uh, not the next meeting, then on December the 6th. And so would like to con congratulate Betty Kane and her staff for all of their hard work, because I think this is a record as far as getting it done early. That's all I got. All right, item 23, executive se section. Section 307, Title 25, Oklahoma Statutes permits the public body to meet in executive session for certain specified reasons under certain specified conditions. It is the opinion of the city attorney that the city council may consider and adopt a motion to meet in executive session to discuss the following items. Item A, discuss, consider, and if deemed appropriate, consider taking possible action regarding pending claim by William Ford against the city of Moore and authorize legal counsel and staff to take action as necessary and appropriate in the interest of the city as authorized by, authorized by 25 statute Oklahoma 307B4. Make a motion we convene to executive session. Second. Would you call for the vote please? Daniel McKenzie. Yes. Jason Blair. Yes. Melissa Hunt. Yes. Adam Webb. Yes. Mark Cam. Yes. Louis Williams. Yes. We are in recess. Everybody say more stand up. Oh. Congratulations. Y'all should get a come up when we leave, come up here and get you a better picture. You want me to take it? Come up and okay. Come up here. Well, we we'll go ahead and go and then come get a better picture. Jason's gonna stay for the picture. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> oh, are you part of the picture? No. I was like, fine. That's what I thought. I was like,
December 16th, not the 19th. Okay. I think I can do that. No, I don't want to. Okay. We are reconvened from executive session. Would the record show that all parties present prior to the recess are still here? And then we would be ready for item D. Make a motion that we deny. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Call for the vote, please. Jason Blair? Yes. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Adam Webb? Yes. Mark Ham? Yes. Danielle McKenzie? Yes. Louie Williams? Yes. Item passes. Item 24 is adjournment. So moved. Second. Okay, call for the vote one more time, please. Danielle McKenzie? Yes. Jason Blair? Yes. Melissa Hunt? Yes. Adam Webb? Yes. Mark Cam? Yes. Louis Williams? Yes. We are adjourned. Thanks, everybody. See you.